Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here. I'm back with another video for Neat and Tangled. Today I'm going to be using a new set called um, Merry Kisses and an older set called Lumberjack Love. And then I'm also using the new Landscapes Duos stencil. So I, this is just a piece of Eclipse masking paper. I just kind of stuck it down so that I could start to make some masks because this is going to be a one layer card. I love these little foxes. I think they're totally adorable. Um, and it is intended to be a Christmas set, but you know me, always trying to get more bang for my buck. Um, so I thought that with the little scarf and stuff, it would make a really cute fall card. And it is the end of September. It's officially fall, even though it's actually 90 degrees where I live. Like, no scarves for me at all. I'm still wearing sleeveless t-shirts. Anyway, um, so I just thought it would be really cute to kind of combine the sets um, to, you know, if you already have that Lumberjack Love set, this is something that you can uh, use together uh, to make just a really cute card. So I stamped the little stump from the Lumberjack Love set. So like they're kind of like curled up on top of it, cuddling. And then I'm going to use a Copic Safe writing pen to trace the top edge of that stencil. And so that's going to create um, the focal point to start building my scene around. So I kind of messed around with it to see how the best way um, to create my hills was going to be. And so what I ended up deciding was to just trace that same line on a piece of Eclipse masking paper and then cutting it out. So I'm going to mask along that back hill. You want to keep both of your pieces. We're going to need both of them to build the scene. So there's um, also pine trees in that Lumberjack Love set two different sizes and so I picked out a couple of those and I'm just going to um, stamp them and I am kind of masking as I go. I did remove the hill mask to stamp some of the trees in front so it gave us just a little bit of depth perception so it didn't look uh, just flat and I mean like making a one layer card the goal is to make that one layer look multiple layered so this is going to help do that. Now I've masked all of the trees. I used more of that Eclipse masking paper um, to mask the rest of the card because I'm going to be doing a Distress Oxide background. B the whole background is going to be Distress. Um, so I picked out the same color combo. I actually used this for a floral card recently and just really, really loved it. So it's Fossilized Amber, Spiced Marmalade, Picked Raspberry, and Seedless Preserves. And it almost gives like a sunset kind of look. I will warn you, anytime you're using masks, anything that is a sharp corner, um, so not a rounded edge, but a very sharp corner, they pull up really easily. I, I don't know why it is. It just always seems to catch that sponge. So just something to be aware of. Now that I have the sky all done, I'm going to remove that hill mask as well as the trees in the back because I stamp them as full masks so I don't want to mask out like the tree on the front of my hill um, and this is where that other piece is going to come in the negative piece I'm going to put that up to mask my sky uh, when I took off that eclipse masking paper that I had covering the bottom it actually kind of stole my um, my little stump mask so if you do that pay attention to those because it happens to me actually quite a bit so I've learned to look for it now we're going to do the bottom of it. So I picked a couple of different greens for the Distress Oxides. You can use Distress Inks or pigment, whatever you have that you like to blend your backgrounds with. I chose Distress Oxides because I just like the way that they're really soft. So here I'm bringing in the, the positive of that mask to start to create some hills. So I'm putting that down and then I'm going to add shading actually behind the hill. So the highlight is going to be on the top edge. I'm not taking this all the way up to the top edge. I'm leaving that Twisted Citron on the top, but I'm adding a little bit of shading with the, the Lucky Clover and the peeled paint. And this will, again, increase that look of depth that we're trying to get. Now, it kind of looks funny right now, but when we do the other side, um, so that there's two hills, and I'm doing the same exact thing. Here, I didn't have everything masked, and I was starting to get a little bit of um, the darker color on the grasses in front, which I didn't want. So I just grabbed that sheet that I had already been using and put it down to protect my project. I could have put it down and just moved um, the whole thing as I went, but I just, I'm lazy and I thought that would be kind of annoying. So here I'm putting almost like they're sitting um, on a hill, 
that that was like the game plan and then again i'm going to add that shading behind by leaving that lightest color that the twisted citron is the highlight on top of the hill it gives them the look of being in the forefront so like they're sitting in this hilly valley with these pine trees in the background the last way that we're going to just finish it off is just by adding some shading to the base of the card again all the way up to that hill i did add some more twisted citron because when i was doing the base layer apparently i was super light-handed in that area here we're going to remove all the masks you can see how those hills came out once we get this little fox mask off you'll really see how it kind of looks like they're hit sitting on this you know top of this little hill in this valley i love it i love the way that it came out and then we're going to get into the Copic coloring. So I have a wide array of browns here. They're all from the E20 family. So from 21 all the way down to 29. The reason that I have so many is because um, a lot of people uh, don't have multiple E's. You know, maybe you pick one that you like. Like my usual go-to is the e, uh, E50 family. But I have multiples, I have lots of choices, but the Copics are an investment, so maybe you don't. And I wanted to show you how you can get a different look, but you're still using the same markers. So I wanted the underneath of their faces, their bellies, and that the little tip of their tail to be lighter. So I'm using the E21 and the E23 there. Um, where her face is tucked under his face, it's going to be darker. Where their little bellies are pushed together underneath the scarf, that's going to be darker. Um, her tail's underneath his tail, again, going to be darker. I did add some shading um, to his tail, not necessarily because it would be darker, but just to kind of make everything cohesive um, so that their their tails were the, the same color. So I'm going to go back in and blend that out with the E21. I did leave uh, quite a bit of white in there. Um, later on, I decided to go back in and blend that out, but we'll we'll talk about that when we get there. So this is all, we're just blending everything out together, and then we're going to start adding those darker colors. So again, which is we're talking about one family and being able to achieve multiple looks, um, multiple saturations with the same thing. So here on their actual bodies, my darkest color is going to be the E23 or I'm sorry, my darkest, my lightest color is going to be the E23. It was the darkest in, in the shading of their bellies. So I'm adding shading kind of to like the outsides of their bodies, um, especially where um, like their tails wrap around. You want to make sure that you're following the shape of their tails because they would not have straight fur there. The fur would would wrap around with, with that shape. So um, just you want to make sure you're paying, no matter what you're coloring, um, just that you're paying attention to those things. I'm going to add in some E25. Again, her face is tucked behind his face, so he's going to catch more light than she is. Uh, their bodies are behind their tails. That's going to be darker. Where their tails wrap around their bodies, darker. Um, her little body, you almost, I mean, it's, you almost can't even see it. For hers, I decided to leave, because I knew her body was going to be so dark, I decided to leave a lighter edge on the outside. Um, I'm still doing those same flicking motions using just the tip of the marker, but I just didn't take it all the way to the black outline of the stamp. The other thing that I'm going to do um, to differentiate the two, because uh, they are quite cozy wrapped up in each other, <laughs> and I want you to be able to tell that there are, in fact, two foxes there. Um, is for her, I'm going to leave the E27 as her darkest color. I'm only going to add the E29 to him. Um, this will help to show that they are are separate and that maybe they have some different coloring, but I'm only adding the E29 really to the areas that are going to be the darkest. So uh, definitely underneath the scarf, definitely where that, that tail sitting on top of his body. Um, I did not take it all the way to the top you'll see on his tail I left a lighter edge and again this is to segregate those two body parts from each other I want you to be able to tell to tell his tail is sticking out away from his body say that three times fast I dare you <laughs> anyway um, so I'm working on blending that out I blended out with the 27 now we're back onto the 25 which is going to be the majority of the shading because remember our lightest color is the E23 so that's really only going to be our highlight color 
in hindsight, I wish that I would have made her um, highlight color a lighter color. I don't feel like there was as much differentiation as I would have liked. There is still clearly some, but I wish that I would have made the E21 her lightest color. I was just kind of apprehensive about doing it that way because um, I wanted her, their faces, their, their bellies to definitely be lighter than the rest of their body. So live and learn. Um, next time I, I would probably make her a little bit lighter, but you get the idea of how you can get two different looks with the same kind of, with the, with the same exact markers. So I'm using these, this E50. Remember how I said I left a lot of white um, on their faces and bellies? So I just went back in with this E50 to kind of blend it out because I felt like the bright white didn't make sense. I'm going to use the same E20 um, family to color in the trees. So I picked the uh, E27 to come, or E25, I'm sorry, to come down from the trees. I colored in the rest of their trunks with the E23. And then I went back in with the E27 and just kind of drew some wiggly lines so that they would have some detail. I did not add this detail to the trees in the back. I actually just colored them in completely with the E27 because they're so far away, you wouldn't see any detail on them really. Again, using the, the um, oh no, we're not going to do this dump yet. I'm lying. I'm jumping ahead. Um, so I picked some, this is different than my, my regular RV family. I just added a little bit of that lightest color, that RV23 to her cheeks to make her um, a little, a bit more ladylike, even though she has the eyelashes. Um, and then I'm going to color every other um, stripe in this, scarf. I couldn't even think of the word. Like scarf is a, what? A hard word to come up with. It's a scarf. Anyway, um, I tried to pick pinks that I felt like were going to match my skyline. I was not successful, but we're going to fix it because you know we're not starting over. Mm -mm, no, we're invested at this point. So my flaw was that I used the RB29. That was my flaw. So basically as I'm coloring these, I'm leaving, I, I'm filling them in completely with the lightest color adding shading from the top and bottom with my mid-tone and then just a little line of the darkest color where this the scarf is tucked in on itself i'm going much darker on the two um tied and like the two ends that hang down i'm only adding shading to the left hand side of the one that is underneath i went back in with the E50 to blend out her cheeks and here's where i i made an error you can see that these do not match the RB29 is almost the same color as an R29. So if you have one or the other, don't bother buying the other one. You don't need it. But I knew that. I knew that they were the same color. And so this made it look much more red than I wanted to. In order to tone that back and make it more of a purple or magenta, I'm going to color over everything I've just colored with a BO4. It matches much better this way. It looks less like Christmas because... That's what I mean. That's basically the road I was heading down was I had I was going to do it green and pink because I thought the pink would be, you know, pink, but my pink looked red, so it didn't. Um, but anytime that happens to you where you don't get like an exact color match, see if there's something that you have in your arsenal that you can go over it with that will change the look of it. So I didn't lose any shading on that pink. It just tinted it. So it was more purple. I'm coloring the scarf the same way with the greens. I'm adding shading. Um, when the lines are up and down, I'm adding it to the top and bottom. When the lines are left and right, I'm adding it to the left and right side, except for that piece that is tucked behind. I'm only adding it to the left hand side because I want it to fall behind, but I don't want it to be just completely dark. Did the same thing. You know, the, those three color blends using um, the lightest, the, the mid-tone to kind of shade and then just a line of the darkest. was much happier with the way that looked. Now we're moving on to the stump. Um, I don't know. I guess I just felt like the need to finish the foxes before I moved on to the rest of the brown, even though I already had those markers out. I, I'm not sure really what my thought process was there. But here we are, nonetheless. Um, so I'm coloring the stump again with the same browns because... We're going to find a way to switch that up to make that work so we don't have to have a whole other family of browns. So I'm adding shading definitely underneath their tails. Um, they're sitting right on top of this thing. They're going to be cast in a heavy shadow. And then the way the stump is drawn is there's a piece that kind of sticks out in the front. 
Well, that piece is going to catch more light than the, the darker pieces. So I'm adding the E29 to the parts of the back, but not the parts in the front. And then again, to get that texture, that detail, I'm going to go in with the um, E29 because it's the the darkest color and I'm just going to do little lines I'm kind of like going up and down sometimes I'm adding a little swirl um, just to to create that wood texture in order to change the color just enough that it doesn't look like we colored everything with the same color I picked an E74 which is a much cooler brown it's much more ashy and by putting that over top of it it really um, tones down the the warm tones the red tones I picked um, a little bit, I, it's not really that different for me. I have used the screen combination before. Um, I just thought that it kind of matched better. I didn't want everything to be that um, lime green, that twisted citron. But I also didn't want to go like full desaturation because it's a pretty bright card. So what I opted to do was, was go into the G families. I am using the tip of the marker, doing some flicking motions, and basically I'm almost like cross-hatching the, the, the trees. So I'm just using lines, and I'm going out from the center, and I'm letting them cross in the center. When I do the lightest color, like when I work all the way out to my lightest color, I'm going in from the edges, so I don't lift up too much of that dark, because I really want that texture to be there. For the tree that is falling behind it, I'm not even going to use the, the G05. I'm just going to use the G17 and the G28. Because it is behind, it would be darker. You would see less detail on that. So I want to make sure I keep the edges of the tree in the front nice and light. So that way you do get that um, perception of depth by making the one behind it darker. So I, I don't want it to have no texture, just not as noticeable here because that we're getting closer to our light source now so the colors are changing so i'm using the same colors as i used before g05 g17 g28 but the before i put them on i did a base coat of a yg03 because it's a brighter color even though it's a lighter color and we are coloring over it it gives a, a base that's much brighter so I'm doing all the same things, coloring it the same way, doing the cross hatching, the whole deal. But at the end of it, after I've, I've gone through everything, I'm going to take that GO3 in from the edges and it's going to look much brighter. I'm not going to show you all the trees, but I do want to note the one in the middle there, which is the lightest. I did not use the the G28 and G17. I actually used the same colors that I used for the scarf because it was so much closer. I put some polka dots on the green of the scarf because I wanted to kind of break up that color. We got a lot of green going on here. And then I outlined everything because that's how I roll. I had only given the hill and the back a black line so it was kind of irking me that the rest of them didn't have any but I didn't want it to be that heavy so the way I kind of compromised was I drew a slight line on the two hills that touched it and that was enough to tie it together I pulled out this sentiment that says falling for you um, since it's kind of more of a fall card from the lumberjack love set and I'm I have a problem when I'm building scene cards that I just see all of these these cute images, this, this beautiful scenery, and I don't take the time to think about where my sentiment is going to go. I did not get a good impression the first time, so I actually stamped it twice. And then in order to make that visible, it's been a minute since I've done this, but it was necessary this time, I used my white gel pen to trace out, um, trace around the sentiment so that you can read it so it's actually legible pulled out my clear uh, sequin mix for neat and tangled and then just used that to kind of accent the sentiment and the last little bit of shimmer thing that I'm going to do is clear wink of Stella on the reddish purple parts of the scarf so I love the way it came out I feel like it's just a really um, pretty and kind of fun card a different way to kind of stretch those holiday stamps thank you guys so much for joining me I hope that you learned a little bit of something and were inspired to to try something out yourself I'll catch you guys on the next video bye